Hello again, this is Cruise Man from my first road trip going from Dallas to Midland, Texas. And I just stopped for coffee and a little rest at uh, McDonald's here in Willow Park, Texas, just outside of Fort Worth. Um, I didn't start recording until now because we're just now getting some daylight, so there's really nothing to see. It's just dark uh, before now. It's about uh, 6, 12 in the morning. And um, I have to say I'm very disappointed in the GPS. I mean, I've been complaining about it since I got the bike, but this is the first time I attempted to use it on a pretty simple road trip, only five waypoints, or maybe six. And it failed. It didn't even get me out of my neighborhood. And as you can see, the destination shows 4721 North Midkiff in Midland, Texas. That is not the destination that I entered. And I entered it into base camp, and I ran it through GPS Babel. And it still does not have the correct destination. Um, so anyway, let me just see if I can edit this route. Uh, I have to delete some waypoints because if I started this route right now from McDonald's, it's going to want to take me all the way back to my home in Carrollton, Texas. It doesn't even have the correct address for me. Um, so I'm just going to see if I can't. I don't know where this Tom Landry Highway in Arlington, Texas came from. Uh, and see here again, since they don't let you use waypoint names, I don't know these addresses. I don't know where they are. So I know we're not in Eastland. I know we're not in Sweetwater. So I'm going to try this Interstate 20 Weatherford and hope that's where we are here at the McDonald's. But I'm not sure. We're really in Willow Park, Texas. We're not in Weatherford. So, and I don't know where this 4721, because you can see down here my last waypoint is 3613 Apollo Court but when it calculates the route it only goes to the fifth waypoint which is 4721 Midkiff so I don't understand that at all okay now it's got the correct destination for some reason so it's recalculating and let's see if this works I'm gonna stop the video get on the road and I'll check in in a second Okay, so now I'm on the highway, uh, on the way to Midland on Interstate 20. I uh, set the GPS, but what happened was the waypoint that I had set for this route was not exactly where McDonald's was. It was actually apparently across the street at a Whataburger. So what I did was I went ahead and started the route. Let me let this semi go by. And I passed the McDonald's. I did not go into the McDonald's. And now what the GPS is trying to do from now on, it can't comprehend that I skipped that waypoint and just am staying on my regular route. It's continually trying to get me to exit. Every time I come on I exit, it wants me to exit, make a U-turn, and go back to that waypoint. This GPS is uh, defective. That's all I can say. It just, it's, it's useless for a road trip. Now, it, it, like I say, it might be okay for going to find the closest Chinese restaurant if you're in a strange town, but for a touring bike, this is the worst integration of a GPS I've ever seen. And I've tested a lot of GPS units, so um, I will basically just clear the guidance because it's, it's just more trouble than it's worth. So even if you put waypoints on your route, if you don't stop exactly at a waypoint, it's going to keep trying to get you to exit, make a U-turn, go back to that waypoint. It just cannot figure out. It will not recalculate the route and let you just keep on going to your destination. It's just absolutely stunning uh, that there is a GPS this incapable in this day and age, and that Honda would even allow something like this 
to be put on a $30,000 vehicle. It's absolute, there's absolutely no excuse. I can live with the display. I actually think it's okay. I can live with the other functions. The other problem is this GPS doesn't have, it doesn't know where it is. So it is inaccurately uh, determining its own location on the map. As I was leaving my house, it thought I was one or two streets over as I was driving through the neighborhood on this route. So, I mean, it was driving me crazy. Every time I would uh, get on the highway, I mean, every five minutes it was saying, make a U-turn, make a U-turn, go back, make a U-turn. And the way it thinks, I never actually arrived at the starting point. It doesn't think I was ever there. Um, I don't know. I know some guys say they're using it and they're having good luck with it, but I don't believe it. I ain't buying it. I haven't been able to get it to work one time for any purpose other than, like I say, just to go find the maybe the closest gas station or something like that. So anyway, we're on the highway. Computer is showing I'm getting an average of 41.7 miles per gallon, which is not that great. I'm only going 65. But uh, we'll check it up the road. I'll be stopping in Eastland to get gas. And uh, after I make that stop, I'll check back in and let you know what the real numbers are on mileage. And uh, that's all for now. Part two coming up. Okay, I'm still on the highway on my way to Eastland. I want to just give you one quick update on the GPS I find rather interesting. I went into the menu and deleted the waypoint that it kept trying to get me to go back to. It kept trying to get me to go back to that Whataburger. So I just deleted that waypoint, which was the very first one, so that the first waypoint in the route is the one 67 miles up ahead in Eastland, Texas, which was my originally my third waypoint. So it seems to be taking me to that waypoint now. So uh, that's one hack. You just delete your starting uh, waypoint and just set it so that your first actual waypoint is the starting point, I guess. It's kind of strange. But I noticed that on the screen, if you look at the screen, I'll try to lean down here so you can see it. It says that I have 274 miles to go, which is probably accurate, but that my arrival time is at 4.04. Now, it's 628 in the morning right now. So I don't know if it thinks I'm gonna arrive at 4.04 in the afternoon, 4.04 tomorrow morning, or if this bike is capable of time travel and I'm actually gonna go back two and a half hours in time and arrive this morning before I left. It's possible, I guess. But whatever the reason, the arrival time is not calculated properly. Okay, I'm still on my way to Eastland. I thought I would do one more little test that I haven't tried yet. We're on a really nice straight stretch of highway. Not too much traffic. And I wanted to see how the bike handles with, uh, take your hands off the handlebar. I know on my 2007, it would track straight down the highway for a long time before it would start to move one way or the other. But on my 2012, it was a pretty dramatic uh, pull. I can't remember, I think it pulled to the left. I can't remember, but it, uh, it did not track straight at all if you took both hands off the handlebar. So once this uh, semi gets by me, I will uh, release the handlebar. Now there is a little bit of wind, but not too bad. I don't think it's enough wind to affect the uh, tracking of the bike highway here is pretty flat uh, so there's one car coming up behind me but I don't think that's a big deal so okay now we're gonna do the test we'll see how far this bike can go straight before it starts to pull to one side or the other okay ready one two three now you can see it moves to the right it does not track straight so let me try it again. One, two, three. Also a little better that time, huh? 
could be the wind pushing it a little. I can't tell for sure. It feels more like I'm going into a headwind right now, not a crosswind, but it could be the wind moving it. But uh, it doesn't feel very windy out here at all right now. Now, it will be windy later, I can tell you that. When it warms up, it starts getting real windy on this highway. Okay, we're going to try one more time. One, two, three. Now, you can see it pulling to the right a little bit. So anyway, that was just a test. I wanted to see how the bike tracked without hands on the handlebar. It is better than the 2012, I'll tell you that. Okay, so now I'm in Eastland. I'm getting ready to head to Sweetwater. I've got gas, got all that done. Um, I'm going to show you what I have to do on this GPS now uh, to prevent it from making me go a quarter of a mile down the road to get to that waypoint. I don't want to have to do that. So basically what I'm going to have to do is go over here to clear guidance and it gives me the opportunity to delete this waypoint which is where it thinks I am right now or it thinks where I'm supposed to be it's actually about a quarter of a mile up the road uh, because it can't seem to find locations on this GPS so basically I'm going to delete that and it says do I are you, am I sure I want to delete it say yes so now it's recalculating the route using Sweetwater as the first waypoint. So now it's just going to try to take me to Sweetwater, which is about, oh, 150 miles from here, maybe. So that's the only way I can get this to work. So I'm going to hit go, and that should be it. Well, I'm just outside of Eastland, and I just got gas. Um, about 135 miles from my original starting point in Dallas or Carrollton, Texas. And uh, just a quick update on a couple of things. Number one, the seat is only good for about an hour for me. I'm six foot two, 180. And uh, just out of just about an hour, uh, I start getting a lot of pain, a lot of pressure points. Um, from the seat, it's just not nearly as comfortable as the seat of my two tw 2012. So uh, I'll be anxious to see what Wingsoft can do with this seat, but this is not a long distance touring bike seat that comes on this Goldwing. Uh, I heard it has almost half as much padding as the previous seat, and I believe it. So I've had to uh, resort to a cushion on top of the seat, which has helped quite a bit. Uh, the second thing is, after I filled up in Eastland, the computer showed 43.4 miles per gallon, and my, uh, my fuel app on my phone actually showed 43.8. So it actually, my actual mileage was a little bit higher than what the computer showed, which is rather strange. That's unusual. But that's no better than what I was getting on my 2012. I'm only going 65 miles an hour. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is because I want to compare accurately with the 2012, because I used to ride this road at 65 miles an hour. I've made this trip dozens of times. And uh, it was not uncommon for me to get 43, 44 miles per gallon on the 2012. So I'm using the ex I'm stopping in the exact same places to get gas. I am traveling at the same speed. The bike is weighed down just about the same, the same stuff. I'm not pulling a trailer. In fact, the bike is 80 or 90 pounds lighter than the 2012. So. Uh, I'm going to give it the whole trip uh, before I make a judgment on mileage because mileage can vary from leg to leg and it can be affected by wind and temperature and various other things. So, I mean, there were times on the 2012 where I might get 39 miles to the gallon on a leg. So we'll let it play out. More updates to come. I'm stopping in Sweetwater to get gas before I head to Midland. And then I'll stop one last time in Midland to fill up, and then we'll do some more calculations. Well, I'm in Sweetwater, Texas right now, getting ready for the last leg of the trip, probably about 110 miles to Midland. 
I just filled up again and uh, a little disappointed that the bike uh, is still only getting about 43 and a half miles per gallon uh, about the same as my 2012 um, so far and we'll have to see how it ends up especially on the ride back but uh, currently um, the mileage is about the same as I was getting in, on the previous bike. We're about seven miles outside of Sweetwater, and this is where it really starts getting windy. That's why they have all these windmills out here. Not sure if you can see them. There's hundreds of them, maybe thousands. I don't know how many there are. They're everywhere. They go on for as far as the eye can see. They've absolutely destroyed what little landscape there is out here, but that's okay. It's another story for another day. But I'm getting probably a 30 to 35 mile an hour crosswind coming on my left side. And I have to say, this uh, 2018 Goldwing seems to withstand the crosswinds a little better than the 2012 did. Maybe just because there's not as much plastic to catch the wind. Uh, it seems to withstand crosswinds pretty well. You do get a little more, I get a little more vibration through the handlebars and the foot pegs than I did on my 2012. Uh, it's like a, like a resonance coming off of the engine. I, I just don't think this engine is quite as smooth as the previous model. But uh, so after seven or eight hours, I can see where the palms of the hands might be a little bit numb and maybe even the feet. It's not terrible and I haven't ridden enough other models of motorcycles, touring bikes to really compare. I just know that it's not as smooth as my 2012. Now the, uh, the roughness of the ride is better. It's a smoother ride because of the suspension. And the suspension soaks up the big bumps, but there is some vibration coming through the handlebars. So, but anyway, overall, it's a comfortable ride. Uh, I like the seating position. Uh, the windshield, which I have the tall Honda windshield. I don't have it all the way up, but I have it up. I can still see over it. So I probably have it up halfway. Right now it's showing I'm only getting 36.7 miles to the gallon after this last fill up. That's not very good. But uh, that should creep up here a little bit as we go along. So anyway, well here we are entering Midland, Texas. And now I feel like a really, I feel like an idiot. I've been talking about the arrival time on the GPS being wrong. And I didn't realize, going back to my Garmin days, on the Garmin system, the arrival time gives you the time of day that you're set to arrive at a certain destination. But apparently on this GPS, it's how much time you have remaining, like hours and minutes. And, uh, you know, I didn't realize that, so. To me, arrival time is a little bit deceptive. It should be drive time. Arrival time to me means the time of day, but I guess that's their interpretation. So that's just a learning curve, I guess. I think it would be more valuable to know the time of day that you're going to arrive somewhere, but that's, maybe that's just what I'm used to. Anyway, I'm. I've decided to record this little segment because I'm actually going with the wind. It got so windy, there's no way you would have been able to hear me. I was getting 35 to 40 mile an hour crosswinds, gusts, on the uh, Interstate 20. And now I'm about, oh, maybe 10 miles from my final destination where I'll stop and fill up with gas, primarily just not because I'm empty, but just because I don't want to have to fill up the morning that I leave next week. So I'll go ahead and fill up today and put the bike in my brother's garage and won't worry about it until I get ready to leave. Actually, the lack of storage or the reduced storage didn't affect me on this trip. I had, I had plenty of room to put everything that I normally bring on this trip. So I'm good with the storage. You can actually 
actually fit a lot more in this trunk than you think you can. But, um, so I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to stop and get gas, and I'll give you my final fuel report on my next motorblog. So again, if you like these videos, if you find any value in them, please subscribe to my channel. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Check out my website, cruisemansgarage.com. And thanks for joining me for this motor vlog, and we'll see you next time on Cruise Man's Garage.